Merry Christmas. I invite you to receive this Christmas call to worship, this poignant poem which strikes, hopefully, at all of our hearts. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the town no room was found for our Savior, nowhere to settle down. The manger was filled with fresh hay with great care in hopes that Emmanuel soon would be there. The shepherds were nestled all asleep on the hill while visions of angels, the skies they would fill. And Mary, waiting expectantly with a very full belly, had just settled into a stable that was smelly. When out on the fields there arose such a clatter, shepherds cleared their sleepy eyes to see what was the matter. Away to the manger they flew like a flash, leaving sheep behind for this hundred-yard dash. The angels and heavenly hosts sang out with full voice, God had come to earth, they hardly had a choice. When what to their wondering eyes did appear but a miniature child held by his mother so dear. With a little infant cry, that child marries one. They knew in a moment he must be God's son. More rapid than eagles, his disciples they came. Each one of them, this Savior, would call out by name. Come Andrew, come Peter, come James and come John. Come Judas, come Matthew, get your tax collecting on. Now Philip, now Simon, Nathaniel, and Jude, on James number two, and that doubting Thomas dude. To the hills of the cross, to the empty tomb wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As flames that one Pentecost morning would fly, when they meet with apostles, in many tongues they would cry. So to the ends of the earth his disciples they flew with Mary and Mary and the other Mary too. And then in my life I heard this call too. Baptism joins him to me and to you. Through straw and clay, friends digging through a roof, rubbing shoulders with prostitutes, he never stayed aloof. As he gathered the crowds and fed them with bread, they sent something bigger. A heavenly banquet was spread. He was dressed very simply, not normal for a king. But his kingdom, you see, was no normal thing. Stripes and scars he would bear on his back. Nail wounds in his hands and a promise to be back. His eyes, how they pierced us. His gaze made us merry. His crown was woven of thorns. How scary. His beautiful frame was hanged on a cross. They gambled for his clothes. Rude dice they would toss. Terrible nails they would fix in his hands and his feet. He was lost and forsaken. Everything spelled defeat. But this tree had a purpose. And God had a plan to save the sinful world by this son of man. He was wounded and beaten and gave up his last breath. But in his dying, he destroyed that fierce power of death. On that dark Sabbath, when all hope was lost, our Savior, our Jesus, paid too high a cost. They wrapped up his body and left him for dead, a white linen shroud from his feet to his head. But early Sunday morning, most of the world still sleeping, some surprised grieving, grieving women began gospel preaching. He rose up from the grave to his disciples gave commission to the ends of the earth so that no one is missing. And they heard him exclaim as he ascended out of sight, happy Christmas to all and eternal life.
well, all is well. Let there be peace on earth. Sing alle, sing alle, luia. All is well, all is well. Lift up your voice and sing. is our Lord and Savior. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia. is our Lord and Savior. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia. All is Thank you, that was beautiful. Would you all pray with me, please? Almighty God, it's dark outside and the nights are long. We watch and wait with mounting expectation for the coming of your Son into the world. We ease our waiting with the distractions of tinsel and tree we delight in their beauty, but Lord, in our eagerness, guard our hearts from celebrating the things we have made instead of the gift you will give. Amen. Each Sunday of Advent, we have been lighting a candle. All four colored candles have been lit, and the only one remaining is the white candle in the center. The candle represents the light that the Jesus Son of God brought into the world when he was born a little baby, God in the flesh. Just like the other candles remind us that Jesus is our source of hope, peace, joy, and love, this candle reminds us of the special moment of birth, the moment of transition from, from prophecy to fulfillment. Tonight we celebrate the coming of God to the world. It's Christmas Eve and Jesus has come for each of us. As we light the Christ candle, may you know that the God of power and might will come, not as an armed warrior, but as a tiny baby in a manger. Please pray with me. God, tonight we celebrate the coming of Jesus. Thank you for coming in the form of a baby to save us and allow us to have life eternal. We continue to pray and wait expectantly until he comes again. Amen.
singing of the hymn Candle of Hope. For scripture reading this morning, this morning, this evening, <laughs> have I mentioned Merry Christmas? Um, this evening, our first scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
Our second scripture reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 18 through 24. Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in his mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, 
The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded and took Mary home as his wife.
Our third gospel reading takes us back to the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now, if you'd please feel free to remain seated and join in the first Noel.
Our next gospel reading takes us, um, continues in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Now will you join in with our angel hymn medley as printed in your bulletin and on the screen.
Dude. If you would bow and pray with me. God of our salvation, we come to you on this wondrous night to gather in praise, to lift up your name with friend, family, and stranger alike. In the beginning, your creative work began with a word, and tonight your creation continues with the word made flesh. On this holiest of nights, we join the everlasting chorus saying, Glory to God in the highest. Great is your name in all the earth. Now, like Mary, we ponder these things in our hearts and wonder how you could love us so much as to actually become one of us, one with us. We remember these stories this evening that remind us of your steadfast love, that affirm that you will never, ever give up on your children. And yet, even on this night, in which we celebrate the fulfillment of love, we recognize that there are many who are still waiting for fulfillment. The fulfillment of adequate food and shelter. The fulfillment of peace and the end of violence. The fulfillment of a restoration of a broken relationship. The fulfillment of a renewing of heart, mind, or body. Giving God to give us the courage to do your work in the world and to share the peace coming to us in the manger this evening. We pray this night especially for those who have traveled to be here. For those who have lost loved ones in the past year. For those who struggle with illness of any kind. For those who will be traveling in the coming days and weeks. For those who work on Christmas, especially health care workers, police, and emergency personnel. For those who cannot make it home for Christmas, hear us, we pray, O God. In all that we do and in all that we are, send your Spirit to send us forward with the majesty of this night and to share the grace we find with everyone we encounter. This we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Invited the shepherds, we too invite you back to Bethlehem town.
Our final scripture reading this evening comes from, again, Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. voices for night divine for night when Christ was born for night divine shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord
Think about um, angels, the way that they're presented in popular culture. The way that we see them in movies, theatrical productions, TV shows, books you read. Can you, can you picture your favorite one? For me, it's Clarence from It's a Wonderful Life. Every time I bell rings that's right Clarence that's right for each one that you can think of think about the role that those angels play in the stories now I want you to think about the angels that Steve has been reading about tonight the ones we've encountered in our Bible stories over the course of Advent the angel that appeared to Zechariah the angel that appeared to Mary the angel that appeared to Joseph in a dream and the angels who come to the shepherds in their fields as they kept watch by night. In each of those stories, an, an angel or angels came as a messenger. The, the word that we translate as angel in English means messenger. Of course, the question to ask each other tonight is, do you believe that God still sends messengers to us to bring us a message? Do you? Hear these words from Hebrews chapter 13, the first two verses. Keep on loving one another like brothers and sisters, and do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. In other versions, it says angels unaware. The Greek words used here are Philadelphia, brotherly love, and philoxenos, the hospitality to strangers. The Greek word xenos means stranger. The Greek word xenia refers to hospitality. It seems that because the two are so similar, that hospitality is always intended for the stranger, for the one who's unfamiliar, for the one we don't yet know. In just two verses, the author exhorts us, the hearer, to be characterized by our love for others, friends and strangers. If you think about the stories that Steve read and the ones we've heard over the Advent season, the angels of Christmas always announce to those they encounter, do not be afraid. Now, I, I've come to believe that they're not saying, don't be afraid of me because of some scary appearance that angels might have, but they're saying, don't be afraid of the message that I bring because I'm bringing you news. I'm bringing a challenge from God. I'm telling you that God is changing things and making them new, and it might shake up your world. Don't be afraid. I think that might very well be the message we need to hear on Christmas Eve. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to share hospitality with a stranger because that person who's unfamiliar to you may actually be the person God has sent to you with a message. The confession I have to make to you as we gather tonight is that this year I wasn't feeling the Christmas spirit. Anybody know what I mean? 
Yeah, not you. You're waiting for Santa Claus. You don't. You feel the Christmas spirit. I'm too old for all that. And my sister died about this time last year. I just wasn't feeling it. I was just hoping to get through the Advent season through tonight and then head off to a vacation in Colorado. Truth. But then I spent a couple of days this week at the hospital filling in for other chaplains' time off. And God, in the way that God does, put some strangers in my path that seem to have a message for me. Maybe. Maybe a message from God. I met two sisters in our oncology clinic at St. Anne's. Two sisters that have been estranged from each other for years. They went two years without talking to each other at all. At all. And then last Christmas, on Christmas Day, one of the sisters, the younger of the two, started missing her older sister. And rather than text her or call her, she stalked her on Facebook. Some of you have done that. You know what I'm talking about. And so she began to go to Facebook to see what her sister had been up to and what was going on with her family. And as she was looking at her sister's pictures and the events of her sister's life over those two years, she received a text. And when she picked up her cell phone, she could tell it was from her sister. And all the text said was, I miss you. And the way the sisters tell it, they had a conversation that day and they began rebuilding a relationship that had gone wrong at some point. They couldn't even remember what they were angry about. But as they started getting closer and talking each day on the phone, the older sister called her little sister one day to tell her about her doctor's appointment and said that she had been diagnosed with cancer. And so her younger sister moved in with her so she could take her to chemotherapy and take her to her doctor's appointments and make sure that she got the care that she needed. And they did that all through the spring and into the summer. And then the older sister was told, you no longer have cancer. You're cancer-free. And so her baby sister moved home. Only to realize that, you know, with all that caregiving, she didn't notice that she didn't feel so good. She went to her primary care physician who sent her to an oncologist who told her that she has cancer. And now she and her big sister have moved in together again. And her big sister takes her to her appointments, makes sure she does her chemotherapy, cooks for her and cares for her. They learned again how to express Philadelphia, the love of brother or sister. I needed that. I needed to meet those two. You see, the sister I lost a year ago, we were estranged for a long time. And we finally made peace with one another, and then I lost her. I met another man who was a stranger to me in our palliative care clinic. Now, this is how palliative care clinic works. People that are in palliative care come every other Wednesday, and they come to our clinic, and they meet with the palliative care doctors who update their medications and, and see if they need anything for pain. They meet with nutrition and work on their diet, and they always meet with someone from spiritual care. And so I was to meet this man that I didn't know. And so I took the simple step of going to a warmer where we warm blankets to 130 degrees and pulled out a warm blanket and went to the refrigerator and pulled out a cold soft drink. And I entered the room with a warm blanket and a cold drink. Simple acts of hospitality. Philoxenias. I gave him the blanket, which he put over him. I gave him the cold drink, which he put on the table next to him and never opened. And then he hunched his shoulders over, and he began to cry. And I did what I've been trained to do, which was to sit there for a while 
and do nothing. And then finally to ask, what's behind the tears? He said, um, the doctor and I visited, and today I made the decision to begin hospice care and to discontinue my treatments for cancer. He said, the hardest part is that I realize I'm not well enough to go to midnight mass at my church this Christmas Eve. And I'll probably never go to midnight mass again. He said, you know what the hardest part is? Not getting to go and sing Silent Night is just too much to take. And he cried. But after a while, he dried his eyes and he looked me right in the eye. And he said, don't take it for granted. Sing Silent Night. Light those candles. Share that light. Share your life with the people around you. Share it with your congregation. He said, when you look out at your congregation on Christmas Eve, you have to know that there's probably one or two of them that won't be here next year. And you don't know who it is. This will be the last Christmas for them. Give everyone a hug and tell them Merry Christmas. Even the visitors and the strangers, freak them out. Because you know what? They need it. You need it. And he said, and I need it. Two sisters. And a total stranger. But I believe, like Andy sang during the Advent season, that there are angels among us. I believe there are Angels among us send down to us from somewhere up above. They come to you and me in our darkest hours to show us how to live, to teach us how to give, to guide us with the light of love. Tonight as we sing Silent Night, please don't take it for granted. Sing the song, light those candles, share that light, and share your life with others. And as we go from this place tonight back into the world, live a life that gives others hope. I say that all the time, but can you hear that? Share the light with one another tonight, that Philadelphia but be prepared for the philozenias to meet with a stranger and offer them hospitality because they might have a message for you. And surely the message we can take to them is a message of hope. Whether we say anything or not, if we just live lives that give other people hope. Amen? Amen. Lori and Jimmy and Patty, y'all want to come? And I'll ask someone if they'll turn the lights down once they're up here and ready, and we'll we'll sing Silent Night.
twelve fifteen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Go and live lives to give other people hope. Okay? Merry Christmas.